Hey everybody, welcome to Daily IoT. On today's episode, I wanna talk about this MQTT portion between our gateway and Losant. I just learned that it's pronounced Losant, not Losant. My apologies, Losant. Uh, I wanna talk about MQTT. I've gotten a few questions from people about what is MQTT and how does it work. Now, I am no expert, uh, but I understand it enough to have gotten it working for our project. So I just wanted to cover sort of the basics. I did a lot of reading and research on it. And so just wanna share uh, what I understand is the important parts of it and just a general overview of what MQTT is. And so we're not gonna have enough room here. I got an idea. I got some old scrap whiteboard. This will work. MQTT. So the first part about MQTT that we're gonna talk about MQTT is that it is built on top of TCP, the TCP protocol. And so you're going to have to have things like routers and networks and Wi-Fi and all that involved uh, to be able to implement MQTT. So that's the first important thing to understand about the protocol. You're going to have what's called a broker. Hopefully you can read this. There is a broker and clients because MQTT is what's called a pub sub or publish subscribe protocol. So you subscribe to topics and then you can publish to topics and that is how uh, devices communicate with each other. So the broker is gonna handle all of the subscriptions and then delivering of messages. And so you have to have a broker when you were using MQTT. Now a lot of times what that's gonna be is just a cloud service like cloud MQTT or something like that, or even something running within your own network. You can set up uh, an MQTT broker within your network, like Node.js, Python. There's libraries for all different kinds of languages to get MQTT set up. So then what we're gonna have are things here. We're gonna call this client one and client two. And think of these as devices, like your sensors. Maybe this is sitting out in my shed out there where I just got my whiteboard from. And it's got sensors on it for temp and humidity. So client two, we're gonna say, is in my garden. And it's got like a, let's say a moisture, a moisture sensor on it, as well as temp. Okay, good. So we've got a broker and we've got two clients that have sensors on them that want to give their data to other parties. As a matter of fact, I feel like I need to draw. Hold on, where's my... I'm gonna get rid of that. And now we're gonna create client three. And client three is my sprinkler system. So it doesn't have any sensors on it, but it has the ability to turn my sprinklers on and off, like maybe that are in my garden. And so we're gonna say that this is a sprinkler controller. Okay, so now we have all these devices and we have a broker set up. So publish, subscribe. The way this works is when client two comes online, it will tell the broker, hey, I have a topic that relates to moisture in the garden just so you know. And if anybody wants to know about those messages that I'm gonna publish, you can send them along to them. And so what the sprinkler controller will do when it comes online is tell the broker, hey, I'm interested in receiving moisture topic messages from the garden sensor. And so when the moisture sensor publishes a topic, uh, publishes a message to its topic around the moisture sensor, the broker will say, hey, the sprinkler system wanted to know about those messages because it's subscribed to that topic. I'm gonna send that message along to him so that he can do whatever he wants with it. And so that is the general idea of how the publish subscribe cycle works. 
Clients let the broker know, here are the topics that I am gonna publish messages to, and they can also say, hey, and by the way, if you get topics, um, these topics, let me know about them. Send those messages along to me. So topics, messages. You can subscribe to them or you can publish to them. Now, what does a topic look like? A topic is literally just a string and it's hierarchical. And I'm not gonna get into the wild cards and things that you can use for that. But literally, for something like the moisture um, sensor, the topic could be something like forward slash home slash garden slash moisture. Just pretend I wrote moisture out there. So that's an example of a topic, home slash garden slash moisture. And so the sprinkler controller can subscribe to that topic. Anytime a message is published on that topic, the broker will let the sprinkler controller know about it. Okay, so that's the very basics of topics. And these things can be as uh, fancy as you want and as long as you want. Um, I got flies flying all over the place here. Um, one rule of thumb or best practice that I've seen about topics is something like client one has a temperature and a humidity sensor. And you might wanna do something like, I'm running out of room here, slash, home slash we're going to say this is oh this is the shed and then slash data and then you could pass the temperature and humidity as the data topic however what is recommended is instead of doing that you can have topics for each sensor reading and so you could have a home shed temperature topic and then you could also have a home shed there's no forward slash here, I apologize. There, you could also have a home shed humidity topic. And so they would send, they would publish messages on both of those topics. So a client can publish messages on as many topics as it would like, which also means that if it's publishing four or five topics, but some client over here only cares about one of them, it doesn't have to get all of that extra data. It just tells the broker, hey, just let me know when the temperature changes. That's all I really care about. And so that's where topics can be very powerful when communicating between different um, clients here. Some of the important features of MQTT, it's getting really hot out here, it's like 90 degrees out here. The first one is persistent sessions. So let's say that our moisture temperature here out in the garden is running on a coin cell battery. And it, you know, it's not on 24 hours a day. It just comes on, takes a moisture temperature, publishes to the topic, and then goes back to sleep. Well, <clears throat> every time a session is created with the broker, the client has to subscribe to all of the topics that it cares about or let the broker know of all of the topics that it's going to publish to. Now, why that's bad on battery power is once that battery, uh, once it goes to sleep, all that information is lost. And so now every time it wakes up, it has to re-notify the broker of all the topics that it's publishing to. And that's overhead. And so what you can do with a persistent session is tell the broker, hey, I might, check out for a while, but hold on to my session. And then when I reconnect, I'm just gonna give you a session ID to which the broker can say, oh, hey, I remember you. No need to re-tell uh, me all about the topics that you're publishing to. I got it all right here, just carry on as usual. And so that is what a persistent session does. The broker holds on to the things, the topics that the clients have either said that they're gonna publish to or that they are subscribing to. The other really important feature, as I understand it with MQTT, did I get that right? MQTT, is retained messages. And what a retained message is, is when a client tells the broker, it's a normal message published to a normal topic, but there's a flag in the message that tells the broker, hey, retain this message. And so what the broker will normally do is deliver the message to all of the clients, and that still works as normal. But when a message is flagged as retained, after delivering the message, the broker says, I'm gonna hold on to this message. And then what happens is, is when client one comes online and says, hey, I wanna get moisture readings from the garden, what would normally happen is 
it would, it would tell the broker that, and then it would just wait until the garden sends a moisture reading. So if this thing's only giving a reading every hour, and this guy comes online and says, I wanna hear about moisture readings, it might not be updated for a full hour. It's gotta sit there and wait. What a retain message is, is when the sensor sends it up and says retain this to the broker, if this client comes online later, let's say 20 minutes later, and says, hey, I'm gonna to wanna to know about moisture readings from the garden, it doesn't have to wait 40 minutes to get that message when this client checks back in. The broker says, oh, hey, you're gonna to wanna to know about moisture readings. By the way, I've got the last known reading, here you go. And so that's really powerful when we're talking about environments where we could have disconnects and or low power where we're going to sleep and these things aren't all online all the time and just sitting here waiting this guy could be asleep while this guy updates his reading and then when he wakes up the broker will say oh hey you wanted to hear about the moisture here's the last reading um, so you don't have to wait for that next update cycle to come through. So that's how a retained message works. It's really just the broker holds onto the message and then when clients subscribe to that topic, it'll say, just so you don't have to wait, here's the last message that I have on that topic. The last thing that I wanna cover, and there's more to MQTT than this, but I don't want this video to be super long, is what's called quality of service. You'll otherwise hear it referred to as QOS. I have no idea if that's off screen, but QOS, quality of service. There are three quality of service levels that you can specify as both a publishing and subscribing client. And they are zero, one, and two. And I always get them mixed up, so let's just refresh my memory on it. Okay, zero is that a message, a quality of service zero when a, when a client publishes to a topic and specifies quality of service zero, the broker says, I will deliver that at most once to all of the subscribers on the topic. And what this is normally referred to is fire and forget. The client publishes it and the broker is going to make a best effort to deliver it to all the clients that are subscribed to the topic, but that's it. I'm gonna, the, the minimum guaranteed level of delivery is zero, meaning it might not even get there. So at most, the clients will get this once. That's quality of service level zero. Quality of service level one means that they will get it at least once, which means there is some exchange between broker and client that the message was actually delivered that says, I'm gonna at least verify that the subscribers got the message. However, the broker could send the message multiple times. So a client that subscribes to a topic could get the message for that topic multiple times, um, which you need to account for on the end of the client. So quality of service level one means the broker will deliver the message at least one time. And then the last one is quality of service level two. And quality of service level two means that the broker will deliver the message exactly once to subscribing clients. And that is what I was referring to a few episodes ago where Amazon and Microsoft don't support quality of service level two. And as I understand it, this is the highest overhead. The broker has to hold on to these message and instead of just saying, you know, sending it a bunch of times saying, I know you got it at least once because you um, acted it or acknowledged it, it has to guarantee that it's only gonna deliver it exactly once, which means it has to make sure I sent it, nothing happened, there were no network interferences, you got it and you responded with an agreement that you did get it and then do that for all of the subscribing clients. And so it's a lot harder to guarantee that and that's apparently why a lot of the cloud providers don't support quality of service too. All right, that's it, that does it for today's episode. So glad to be out of the boiling hot garage there on the whiteboard. I hope that you found that useful. Again, if you have any questions on MQTT, um, whether I know the answer or not, stick them down in the comments and I will find the answer because I love learning about this stuff and sharing that back out with you watching. And so, um, question of the day, I was boiling up there. Do you prefer the hot or the cold? Cold, cold, cold. I'm a winter person myself. I prefer the snow and the cold. Um, some people are summer fans. So which is your preference, hot or cold weather? I appreciate everybody watching Daily IoT, the show where together we're learning how to make the Internet of Things one day at a time.